My name is Ian and welcome to Planted. Now I'm on a mission to help you do more with plants. And in this episode, I show you my magic tomato making machine. It's very simple, a good sized pot, a frame that's attached to the pot, three tomatoes that you grow around it in a spiral. Oh my gosh, it's a little chocolate milkshake. <laughs> This is a finished item, good sized pot, three posts, and at the top it's tied together with some garden twine. This will grow so many tomatoes. First thing is to get a, a good sized pot. Now you can use nice ornamental pots and come up with a, an attachment method, but what I like to do is use an old plastic pot and drill three sets of two holes. These holes are drilled two inches apart and they're equally distance spread around the circumference of the pot. We'll use those holes to attach our posts. When it comes to growing tomatoes, they're incredibly hungry. So if you take a little bit of effort and mix, some, mix up some of your own growing medium and add a few things to it, you'll do very, very well. First thing I do is empty it onto a tarp and then go through and remove any lumps and bumps. Just make it nice and even. To that, you add one spade load of good garden soil. This came from the planted courtyard. Next up, we add a cup of 101010 10 fertilizer. By using an old blanket or a tarp or any layer of your choice, you can put on your growing mix, your fertilizer, your soil, and it's by far the easiest way to gently blend those three items together to get a nice, balanced, uniform growing mix. And from there, you can just easily shovel it into your pot. Remember, you don't need to overly compress this. It will naturally settle by itself. The reason I like to add that little bit of soil is that it is really good at rehydrating when the medium dries out a bit. That little bit of soil takes in the water really nicely. This pot is 15 inches by 11. That's the smallest size pot I would, I would go for. Place the three posts in your filled pot and make sure that they go all the way down to the base. They need to touch the base for added support and then line them up with the previously drilled holes. Now what you don't want to do here is tie these too tight because we want them to bend in a little bit like that. So you can see here we've got a bit of a gap. If you put them like that they'll never bend. So we want them kind of like that. The posts can be made out of whatever material you have at hand. I've got a little stash of uh, one inch square white oak strips from a previous woodworking project. They're about five feet tall and they work just fine. It doesn't need to be strong in itself. The strength comes when it's wired together properly. Now you really should use wire at the lower end because that's where the water is. If you use typical garden twine it will rot and break. Don't skimp on this little process. It'll make everything so much more stable. This is uh, the yellow pear tomato, which I think is fantastic. Little small yellow pear shaped fruit, great flavor. And the fruits are not too heavy, so they don't collapse and break the plant. So we've got two of those. And just to prove my point, this is the beefsteak, which is a super duper heavy, which will demolish any frame you put on it. But I'm going to grow this in such a way that I don't ever let the side shoots grow. We just have this single stem with its fruit on each side and it'll grow and be much more easy to manage. Now these plants are fantastic for children. They grow so fast. They're very visual. You water them, you take care for it and there's a wonderful return. It's a great response. But what you have here, this is a really good example. The amount of growing medium here and the amount of fertilizer here is tiny. 
this plant will grow so fast and exhaust all of that nutrient. So when you buy these, you've got to get them in the ground in a pot. The day you buy them, don't wait, because they will deteriorate very, very quickly. Tomatoes have got a really unusual characteristic, and that is that the stem will put out new roots. So I like to break off the first three or four inches of the stem. And you want to go to one of the posts and make a hole. But you're not going to plant it upright. You're going to plant it on an angle like that. Because I want these to wrap around our frame. And I'm going to get the soil up to this level. So that's the beefsteak, so do put a, a little, little label there. It'll be, become very apparent that it's the beefsteak when it starts to put out huge fruit. These are all the little side shoots that make the plant go crazy. Uh, this unit, properly managed and watered, and it'll probably need water every single day, because when this gets going, it is huge growth and you've got three plants in here pumping out water. Put the yellow label there. So this is our little side shoot that we don't want. You want to plant two or three inches of the stem. Make sure that you fill your pot to in a, a couple of inches at the top of the pot, because this is your growing medium. You want as much mass here as you can. If you have a big pot and you leave it four or five inches shallow, you're missing out. You're missing out all that volume to support the plant growth. Now the fertilizer I put in here is real basic, very affordable, quite aggressive, very strong fertilizer and it doesn't have calcium in it and tomatoes must have calcium otherwise they get blossom end rot where the ends go all soggy so this is a great bib and braces fertilizer it really gets them going but you're going to have to then once a week do a tomato fertilizer with high calcium so I don't think this is the only fertilizer you need the amount of growth these plants put on is huge the harvest you can expect is monstrous so you have to water it and you have to feed it. So don't skimp. And finally, with tomatoes, you want momentum. You want growing momentum. This plant gets going in the next couple of weeks and then you go on vacation for a weekend and don't water it, you'll come back and it'll look terrible. And the growth rate has gone up, you've left, and then it'll go right back down again. And that momentum has now been interrupted. So if you've tried tomatoes in the past and they haven't worked, very hungry, Plant them deeper, never let them dry out, make sure you fertilize them. And when it comes time to watering, this is quite a, a good sized container. If you flood this full of water now, it's going to increase in weight, making it more difficult. So you might want to put this in place in full sunshine, not up close to a wall, you want light to get all the way around it. And, um, then you can water it in place. But I'm gonna do it now to show you. Now, if you don't want three tomato plants, you could easily put one in the middle and grow it up and take a couple of side shoots up the stems. But you don't want to end up in July with a huge crown of, of dense leaves because the sunlight can't get to the fruit to ripen it. And 
we've all gone through the summers where suddenly you come into more tomatoes and you can possibly know what to do with. This way, you will lengthen the season because the sunlight can get to the early ones and ripen and you don't have all that foliage taking up all of the nutrient. So that's, that's it. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you this throughout the season and you can see how it performs. Um, so on that note, thank you for watching Planted. Tell your friends, tell your family. This is how you grow tomatoes. Happy planting. <laughs>